ripoffs, mockbusters, copyright infringements, whatever you want to call them, they are hard to avoid. Whenever a new animated film is released these days, you can find a lame, low-budget imitation of it through digital or Redbox rentals. See some of the worst offenders that have ripped off hits like Frozen, Toy Story, and Trolls. Don't get ripped off yourself and click subscribe. You'll join our notification squad and be the first to know of new content. And can you guess which movie is represented by these emojis? Stay tuned to the end to find out. Oh, there it is. The Netherworld. Kira the Brave. After seeing so many damsels in distress, Brave presented a whole new Disney princess. Meredith didn't care about getting all dolled up and could shoot arrows better than the rest of them. The original story showcased the defiant red-headed girl on a mission to save her family. Then the film Kira the Brave came out and it was a clear carbon copy of the Disney film. When it all boils down, Kira is also a defiant girl who must rise up and save her family. Aside from the similar plots, Kira the Brave uses cover art that features a full focus on the redhead and showcases a similar font to the Disney movie. This doesn't make it worth renting at all. Kira the Brave features cheap animation and outlandish details involving magic in a hard-to-follow villain story. The movie fails to have the same heart, story, and family message that Brave gets across. The film was produced in India and obviously rushed to get released just as Brave was hitting theaters. Even worse than Kira the Brave was a straight-to-DVD movie entitled Braver. The film had nothing to do with the actual Brave movie, copied Brave posters, and fooled a lot of people into buying or renting the fake film just because because it looks so similar. Cargo Talking cars isn't the most inventive thing, but the animated film Car Go could have tried a little harder not to be a blatant ripoff of cars. The Disney Pixar film franchise first premiered in 2006 and has been outpacing knockoff films ever since. With the release of Cars 3 in 2017, you knew another ripoff would come and Car Go comes sputtering in. It's like the film doesn't even try. Featuring a voice cast with stars like Haley Joel Osment and Melissa Joan Hart, you would think the film was made in the late 90s. The lackluster animation doesn't help it much either. Just like Cars 3, there's a big sequence that takes place in a demolition derby. Unlike Cars 3, you don't actually care whether any of the cars make it out alive or become totaled in the process. The eye designs, goofy characters, and car puns are all abound in Car Go, but they're not pulled off as effectively as the Pixar films. The city streets look like a PlayStation 2 video game and hardly feature any details in the blank buildings and designs. If you thought Cars 2 was a disappointment, it's Academy Award worthy compared to this. I am the lost princess, aren't I? Tangled Up the story of Rapunzel is nothing new in animation, but Disney put a whole new spin on it with the release of Tangled. The CG animation mastered the long hair, magical powers, and created a fun adventure for movie fans. Looking to cash in on the hit film, an animation company decided to release a rip-off movie called Tangled Up. The front cover is an obvious copy as it showcases a CG design of long blonde hair flowing down from a tower. The unsuspecting bait would cause parents to rent this sham of a movie which barely has anything to do with Rapunzel at all. Once the film starts playing, it goes through various animations of other various stories like Hansel and Gretel. The 2D animation and designs are obviously something out of the 1980s that has been repackaged to fool people into renting it. Towards the end of the DVD, the Rapunzel story is finally featured. The bland animated tale lacks the heart, comedy, and music from the Disney movie. It's not even worth watching if you're a fan of the basic Rapunzel story. Just try not to get tangled up while picking the proper movie for renting or buying. The reef is supposed to be different. All the fish there get along swimmingly. Izzy's Way Home if you took the story of Finding Nemo and reversed it, then you would have the mockbuster movie known as Izzy's Way Home. In Finding Nemo, Nemo gets caught by a scuba diver and is taken to an aquarium in a dentist's office. Nemo is looked at strangely for his messed up fin. Izzy is looked at strangely for odd dots on her face. We think you get the picture. Asylum Pictures decided to cash in on the success of Finding Dory by releasing Izzy's Way Home back in 2016. Tori Spelling provides the voice of Izzy while Joey Fatone plays Carl, another aquatic animal that assists Izzy in her adventure. The animation isn't as bad as some other knockoff films, but it can come off poorly at times and the story is such a ripoff that it's hard to enjoy this movie at all. The film not only copies Finding Nemo, but it forgot to include a lot of the clever comedy the Pixar animation is known for. Similar to when Shark Tale was ripped off by The Reef, high-budget underwater stories often find themselves dealing with poor imitations. It's just a case of low-budget film companies fishing for desperate dollars. You hear that, Gerda? This here troll. He betrayed you. Snow Queen and Frozen Land 
The massive success of Frozen had Disney chomping at the bit to make more with their hit film. That's why they chose to release a quick short entitled Frozen Fever. But Disney wasn't the only one banking off of Frozen success. WizArt Animation released a film entitled The Snow Queen. Although the film was released nearly a year before Frozen, the marketing ads and poster designs were all created to match Frozen's designs in 2013. Once Frozen became a big success, The Snow Queen released two sequels focused on similar themes and stories that Frozen showcased. Each film has trolls, magical snow queens, and some goofy sidekick to help them along the way. Both stories may be based off the original Snow Queen story by Hans Christian Andersen, but it's clear the Snow Queen franchise borrowed a lot from Frozen. Another ripoff came from a movie originally titled The Legend of Saria. The film doesn't have much to do with Frozen, except for the similar winter setting and the use of some magical powers. After Frozen was released, the movie magically changed its name to Frozen Land, and used almost the exact same font as Frozen. It was a downright shady way to try and make more sales for the film. Don't push me cause I am close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. Tappy Toes are you interested in watching a silly movie about a penguin who would rather tap dance than conform to the regular routines of his other penguin friends and family? Then enjoy the movie Tappy Toes. Oh, you thought we were going to say Happy Feet, didn't you? Nope, it's Tappy Toes, the poorly flash animated film which completely rips off Happy Feet. And the funny part is, they don't even seem sorry. The cover is a ripoff, the storyline's a ripoff, and the viewers will feel ripped off wasting their 40 minutes on the quick and choppy animation. It really pales in comparison to the Warner Brothers animation original known as Happy Feet. Along with spectacular penguin animations and Happy Feet, one of the main reasons that the film succeeds is because of the voice cast. Elijah Wood leads a voice cast that also features Robin Williams, Nicole Kidman, Hugh Jackman, and Steve Irwin. Tappy Toes features no one you've ever heard of, and a bunch of the actors voice multiple characters throughout the film. Tappy Toes was released in 2011, five years after Happy Feet came out, but right in time to hit rental services just as Happy Feet 2 was hitting the movie theaters. Hey, everyone! Then pulled his first prank! Troll Land DreamWorks Animation took one of the more popular toy lines from the 1980s and 90s and turned it into a fun musical that the whole family could enjoy. With a voice cast led by Justin Timberlake and Anna Kendrick, Trolls has a lot of feel-good moments, positive messages, and the animation designs on the trolls is something kids enjoy looking at. Sadly, none of that is true for the Trolls rip-off movie entitled Troll Land. The movie follows a family and creepy-looking trolls who play pranks on humans until one day he befriends a human in the park. The film copies several elements from DreamWorks' Trolls, but fails on almost every level. Good luck getting past the first five minutes of the dreadful animation style and poor character design. It's pretty sad when the animated general car insurance guy has better animation than your whole movie. The troll designs are more creepy than cute, and it makes all of the trolls come off as extremely unlikable. Featuring a voice cast of forgettable celebrities like Ja Rule and Chris Daughtry, the movie tried to match the musical superpower of Timberlake and Gwen Stefani, but struck out. Just one kiss. Just one. Unless you beg for more. <laughs> the Frog Prince Disney made a ton of headlines when they decided to create their first African-American princess and make her the star of a film. A number of other animated films made it seem like this was a common occurrence as copycat films decided to do the exact same thing in the months leading up to the big release of Disney's The Princess and the Frog. The musical tale followed the story of Tiana and was loosely based on the classic fairy tale The Frog Prince. It was a great story which honored the city of New Orleans, used the classic Disney animation style, and gave children a new princess that they could look up to for years to come. Let's hope those children don't actually accidentally watch rip-off movies like The Frog Prince. This animated film just happens to feature an African-American girl who seeks the love of a prince and ends up finding one in the form of a frog. The adventure is nowhere near as exciting as the Disney version, and the main character is not as likable. They basically stole the character designs and inserted them into a story that seemed like an 8th grader put together for some type of class project. <laughs> Chopkick Panda you gotta give the ripoff film Chopkick Panda a little credit. At least the title is funny. Clearly the movie is ripping off Kung Fu Panda, but what exactly is a chopkick anyway? It's actually some type of slang for a roundhouse kick, but it just sounds obnoxious as a movie title. The cover of Chopkick Panda looks almost exactly like Poe, the Jack Black voiced panda from the Kung Fu series. The actual animation in the ripoff movie is 2D. The story is nearly identical to Kung Fu Panda, focusing on an overweight panda that wants to become a Kung Fu master and save the day. The promotional materials for the film actually refer to the main character as Lou instead of his real name 
name in the film, Zebo. The note-for-note -note copycat does not feature the same great comedy or moments as the Kung Fu Panda series. For some reason, a martial arts fighting panda is a huge inspiration for a number of these mockbuster companies. Along with Chopkick Panda, there have been other rip-offs like The Little Panda Fighter, Karate Panda, and The Adventures of Panda Warrior. Maybe Kung Fu Panda 4 should focus on a battle royale with all of the other rip-off pandas to see who the last one left standing will be. There you go. Ah. Buzz. This isn't goodbye. The Buzz Identity if you're looking for a true rip-off of Toy Story, then you need to look no further than the release of Universal's The Secret Life of Pets. The film simply replaces Woody with a dog named Max and Buzz Lightyear with a dog named Duke. When Duke moves in, they butt heads and end up getting lost away from their home. They go on a crazy adventure and end up back with their owner who had no clue about their crazy day. While The Secret Life of Pets does a little bit extra to cover up their copied formula, there are multiple rip-off films that do not. The Buzz Identity is one of them. When you first come across the poorly animated Buzz Identity, it looks like a huge copyright infringement of both Disney and the creators of the Jason Bourne series. The animation takes direct characters, moments, and scenes from both Toy Story 3 and the Bourne Identity. It turns out that this whole animation was a parody clip made for the Cartoon Network show Mad based on the magazine. You would think a cable company like Cartoon Network could afford a little bit bigger budget than the one provided for this copycat animation. At least Robot Chicken gets it right when it comes to parodies and animated designs. Well, there you have it. What ripoffs do you think were the biggest copycat. Should these movies be allowed to be made? Are there any that we missed? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to Screen Rant on YouTube so you can stay up to date with our awesome videos. And the answer to our emoji quiz is…